Telstra has declared the business has reached a turning point in its financial trajectory after reporting a fall in net income of $23.1 billion, but an increase in net profit of 2.4%. The telco giant will pay a final dividend of $0.08 cents per share and is committed to distributing half of the net proceeds from Infraco Tower sales to shareholders in a $1.35 billion on-market share buyback. The Telstra share price jumped nearly 4% on the news and is up nearly 30% this year. CEO Andy Penn says the T22 strategy is paying off. We've been on a major transformation program, uh, Catherine, and so there's a lot, obviously, that's been involved in delivering this result. But if I was to put my finger on perhaps one of the most important parts of the result, it was our performance in our mobiles business. Uh, that's a very substantial part of our business. We saw EBITDA growth of 170 million in the year and importantly 290 million uh, in the second half of the year so that was a, a strong contributor and it really demonstrates as I said today that we've hit a turning point uh, in the financial trajectory of the company. On that uh, you did uh, say today that the you know Telstra is at this turning point in the financial trajectory why is that exactly? Well, we've been fundamentally on this uh, journey. We, we call it T22, but that's just the name of our strategy. But it's about uh, radically transforming the company, particularly against the background of um, the impact of the migration to the MBN on Telstra, which is really essentially um, having an impact on the company because it's a, it's a transfer of a part of the business that we used to come under Telstra back to the government through the MBN. And that's created a very significant financial headwind. And so the program that we've had in place is around responding to that, simplifying the business, you know, improving productivity. We've, we've reduced our headcount by a third. We've reduced our cost by $2.3 billion per annum. We, we've reduced our um, number of consumer small business uh, plans that we sell from 1,820. So there's been an enormous amount of work that the team's done. We're a vastly different company today than we were three years ago. You mentioned today that Telstra is now in a position to grow earnings. Guidance is at around uh, 7 to $7.3 billion. How will you achieve that? Where will the growth come from? And what could some of those headwinds be in achieving that? Well, certainly I'll come back to mobiles is going to be a big contributor. Secondly, our ongoing productivity program. We've delivered $2.3 billion to date, but we announced today that our target for FY22, which is the current financial year, is another $430 million. And the other thing, as I mentioned, is that the, because the migration to the MBN is coming to an end, we uh, the financial headwind that that creates this year is going to only be $350 million. It sounds rolls off the tongue, only $350 million, but it's been as much as seven, eight, nine hundred million million in the last few years per annum. I want to ask you about how important the other investments in uh, new business areas are to Telstra, being health and potentially energy uh, to Telstra's growth projection. I mean, does this also represent a change in strategy away from the core traditional business? No, it's certainly not a change in strategy, um, Catherine. Um, you know, we are very much a telco. That is the core of our business. Um, however, the growth is important insofar as... Um, because we're a very big company and we've got a very significant market position, uh, that sometimes means that growth from the core is, is not as easy. And so finding adjacencies which can leverage the capabilities and the skills that we have to achieve other avenues of growth is obviously um, you know, really exciting and really important. And our health business, as an example, uh, it's all about providing digital healthcare solutions. And we have a lot of those capabilities connecting different parts of the health system we're expecting high single, uh, sorry, high teams organic growth this year in health. On top of, uh, sorry, and on top of that, we've done, announced two significant acquisitions recently: Medical Director this week and uh, Power Health a few weeks ago. Mm. Uh, Andy Telstra is three years into its four-year T22 strategy, which you alluded to. The last time we spoke was regarding the sale of the Infraco Towers, key to that strategy. But now the focus, very much so, on the sale of Infraco fixed assets. It's a much more complex deal. How's Telstra tra tracking with this, and how confident are you of its success? Well, as you say, Catherine, it is a lot more complex. It's also a lot bigger, by the way, I should say. Um, the economics of our Infraco uh, fixed business a six times the size of the towers business. Uh, and that in itself was a big was a big transaction. So as you can imagine, the complexity involved. And of course, the other aspect is uh, those assets are also relevant for 
uh, supporting NBN and, and there's other considerations as well. So, look, we're well advanced in relation to all of our discussions and engagement with partners, key stakeholders, the government, um, NBN, regulators and other parties. Uh, and we, But it is a lot more complex. And so uh, the, the aim is still to get in place the restructure by the end of the calendar year. Um, but uh, we've obviously still got a bit to work through yet. And finally, Andy, on uh, COVID vaccines, what is Telstra's position in mandating staff vaccinations? Well, the first thing I should say, Catherine, is I am pro-vaccinations. Vaccinations have been important in creating the, the, the health and the well-being of our society today, whether it's in polio or typhoid or tetanus or COVID, in all sorts of different ways. And, and so, therefore, I'm pro-vaccines and I'm pro-COVID uh, vaccines. I've had my vaccines some time ago. So... Um, and also, I'm completely conscious that we have people in the workforce that are coming in touch with lots of different, well, lots of people every day with customers. Uh, and it's important that we find ways to protect both our people as well as our customers. And so, therefore, requiring people who are doing certain roles to have vaccines is absolutely a relevant consideration. And we're, we're giving that um, detailed consideration right now. But I've committed to my teams and my people that when we make a decision, whatever that decision is, we, they will be the first to know. Andy Penn, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for joining us on The Business. Thanks so much, Catherine.